So the questions keep popping up about the Destruction Druid and the Windhammer Druid, or basically the chance to cast Druid builds, and how they actually hold up in 2.7 with the changes that have been put in place. And really, they're not bad, but due to being entirely item restricted, there are no low level options or starter build options for them. So there really is no room for progression guide on them like most of the build videos I do. So instead, we're going to pack two late game build guides into this video to clear the path a little bit. Starting out with the one that pops up because there's less videos on it, and that is the Windhammer Druid, which I only call it that because it's the weapon most people ask about building around. The reality is, Windhammer, while a solid weapon and a great Fury Druid tool, I actually prefer Stormlash for the theme. This is because while it caps out a bit slower than Windhammer, it lets you have a shield, and with changes over the past several patches, it's not nearly as rough of a situation, and Stormlash gives you Tornado for actual damage, rather than Twisters for the stun effects which we can get elsewhere. Though if you're curious about what weapons can function on this build, you basically have two paths. Twister, which stuns, and you will find on Windhammer for striking weapons, and then you have Tornado, which will do damage, and is found on both unique Scourges, though Stormlash does beat out Horizon's Tornado, and you have the rune words wind and rift with wind being garbage and rift actually being competitive here. and since twister is available on other gear like carrying wind it seems a bit redundant to try and pack it on our weapons too since it's not going to be a damage tool but rather a support tool to boost survivability which sort of flies against the theme of spamming a spell from a weapon for me i think we should be trying to kill with it just like we try with a destruction druid so we'll be getting to that one in a bit too so it basically boiled down to Rift in a Scepter or Polearm, which gives you Tornado and Frozen Orb, which works fairly well and is good against physical immunes, but is slower swinging, or we go with Stormlash, which gives us Tornado and Static Field, some Crushing Blow, and a lot of faster attack. Funnily enough, both work out, but due to my weird luck of all but one Stormlash I found being ethereal, I threw a Zod in one, something you cannot do with a rune word, so indestructible weapon wins because I don't want to dump all my resources into repairing my weapon every five minutes. So since we're going with damage with Tornado, we need to set up our skills to support it, since synergies do work for chance to cast skills. So that means Hurricane, Twister, and Cyclone Armor are maxed out. And if you wanted to, you could bump up Tornado for Hurricane damage to help that out as well, and it would probably be fairly effective. But we're going for the memes, so I wanted more attack rating. That means I went Max Fury as, just instead, which also helps out our actual attack damage for leech purposes. Now, with my specific setup that you've seen in the background, I went with hitting 26 Werewolf after plus skills. This is because I'm going full ham and trying to get max attack speed on this, and I sacrificed a lot for it, since even at level 26 Werewolf, we need a grand total of 133% increased attack speed to hit that upper limit. This means I packed on equipment like Hustle Armor, which funnily enough makes running with Feral Rage a chaotic mess due to sheer speed. I also grabbed my Andariel's Visage with an attack speed jewel in it, and not Frotu's Coil for some Strength and Life Leech, and Laying of Hands for Attack Speed, though I'd much rather use something with Mana Leech on the gloves with Attack Speed there. This keeps our amulet free for either Atma's Scarab for Amplified Damage so I can use Infinity on my Mercenary for Chance to Hit purposes, though in a more balanced setup you could get some of your Attack Speed here or even your Leech. We use Carrion Wind for those Twisters since we're not abandoning them, and yes, I realize there's absolutely no way we're dropping below Max Poison Resist because everything seems to have it with this kind of setup. And of course, standard melee pickups like Gore Riders and Raven Frost for Crushing Blow and Cannot Be Frozen. For Shield, I went Storm Shield for Resist though. Block, damage reduction, though Phoenix does work here as well. I just didn't want to overlap too much with the other build, and this is still a great tanky option for resist and block. Stat-wise, I did go for high block with pumping dex because the shield choice as well. So now we have 75% block while fighting and a 46% chance to evade while moving thanks to the armor and plus skills. Though it is unfortunate that it does not do anything while standing still. As far as functionality, the build works fine. It hits a few more things, our gear gives us enough elemental damage to deal with with physical immunes throughout the game, static helps out a bit too, and we attack very quick. Though it is fine to drop some of the attack speed boosts for more survivability, since even lower breakpoints do feel fine. The drawback is, it doesn't do quite as well against bosses as more focused proper fury druids, or even fire claw druids, and if we leaned a little less into the memes and used tornado and twister as more generic support rather than a focus, it would be fine as well, and probably a bit more stable. But it is fun to play as is, and the ability to cast hurricane and cyclone armor are fairly solid boons to the toolset as well. Funnily enough, on the Destruction Druid side, we're even more limited in options, assuming you're doing it in the fire theme. You're pretty much limited to two options. 
Phoenix or Destruction. And Destruction is just more fun, not to mention we can use Phoenix on the shield just fine. And the Dual Phoenix is more geared towards the Fire Claw variant of the build, which is less chance to cast and more just Fire Claw piercing with Flare. One really nice thing about this setup for both weapon options is that they work in phase blades without sacrificing a lot of punch, regardless of the flavor you go with. So it's indestructible and fast naturally, meaning less points in werewolf needed, you don't need a zod rune or massive repair costs, and less increased attack speed on gear is needed to reach the breakpoint, since with level 12 werewolf, we only need 99% increased attack speed to hit max fury, and the requirements only go down from there, so I aim for about level 15 werewolf or higher, since that frees up a decent number of slots by dropping that down to 90%, which is a lot more reasonable. And as I mentioned, if you're willing to give up a couple frames, you can make both of the builds even tankier in general with that armor slot. But considering the tools at our disposal, you will pretty much never really struggle with durability either way. It's just personal preference. If you want to do this in hardcore, you might want to go tank. Now, the rest of the Destruction's flavor gear that differs from the Wind one is pretty much what you'd expect from any other fire build. A Phoenix Shield for corpse consumption and recovery, flickering flame for fire resist to counter using a fire sunder, and of course the minus enemy fire resist on all of this. Though we do end up wanting an attack speed amulet, so either High Lords or Cat's Eye, though when using Hustle, I prefer High Lords for manageable zoomies. Though one big downside of the Phoenix Shield setup is that you need to invest a metric ton of dexterity to get max block with it in a Monarch. So you'll either struggle a little bit with life in some areas compared to other builds, or you'll be relying on kill speed and redemption to keep you standing against most attacks with lower block percent. Thankfully, both ways do work, though I do prefer block rate with the changes over the past several patches. Skill-wise, of course the Fire one is going to be different. We could always go the Fire Claw setup and this would be fine, but again, we're going for the memes since that's what was asked for. And there are better Fire Claw gear goals than Destruction, by a fairly decent margin. But for the fun of dropping a half dozen volcanoes and raging fire streams, it's the best since you cannot do this with casting alone. So with that in mind, we want to boost those volcanoes. That means Molten Boulder, Fissure, and Armageddon. And much like the tornado flavor in Hurricane, we use Armageddon while in wear form, which means we do get a bit of an area of effect in addition to the volcanoes. Though we sadly do not end up with Cyclone Armor, which can suck sometimes, but we make up for it a bit by having Molten Boulders, and you can keep that Carrion Wind for a few twisters to help out with crowd control. Overall, both builds are quite fun, and while they do fairly well at milling through crowds of enemies, especially for primarily melee builds as it is, the only downside is they lack the boss killing power of most other melee builds, even with the swarm of spells they cast while attacking. They're not going to beat out top tier builds for anything, but they can clear every area in the game at reasonable speed in an entertaining manner. If you're looking for the caster versions of the Wind and Fire Druids though, the links should be on screen now. And if you found this helpful or enjoyable, hit some of those buttons under the video now to tell YouTube you want more content like this.